20. If you listen carefully, you can hear the sound of kids losing points because they're arguing about killing baby fish. Things that I don't care about. Tuesday, March 26th, regular class. We're going to be talking about killing baby fish because apparently that's a fun thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> reading Outsiders and getting farther into that. Um, if you're at home, then you're not getting your shirts because I'm handing out the camp shirts today and our camp information and the shoe drive continues through tomorrow. Uh, you will not get your camp information on the video because that would be awkward and creepy. Uh, but we will record up to that to help you guys out who are missing. And you can still turn in your missing grant test corrections, which I highly recommend. Please give them to me the sooner I can grade them. And then I'll come back to this screen. This is what we're going to use when we're handing out stuff on the little yellow sheet. And I'll explain more about that, but it won't be until after the video. And see, outsiders. We started getting into the Paul Newman. We just barely got in those three ones for you guys. Let's see, with Paul Newman. Why do you guys know Paul Newman? Because he's, he's in the race. Madagascar. Oh, cars. I don't know. Madagascar. Rhymes with Madagascar. Cars. And then also he created the salad dressings and stuff like that. And we have... The main character's name is Pony Boy, like and his brother's name Darian. Soda and Soda and Darian. Um, and then from there, they call it a gang, although they don't go around shooting anybody or anything fun like the that. Gardening gang. Like the basic people hanging out together. The gardening gang. Yeah, we have the, like the gardening gang, who hopefully doesn't shoot anybody, although they could bury them pretty easily. No, what they do is they get shovels and they. We have them. greasers, which are the main group that we have and in there. And then the socias. And then the socias, which are the are the cool kids. And with you guys, let's see, we yeah, were on page three, because we did not get on right now, we pick up from there, that after that first <coughs> paragraph, and that's where we'll pick up to get a little bit farther into it. It says, I could have waited, on the back of one, that's sweet. I could have waited to go to the movies until Dairy or Soda Pop got off work. They would have gone with me, or driven me there, or walked along. Although Soda just can't sit still long enough to enjoy a movie, and they bore Dairy to death. Derry thinks his life is enough without inspecting other people's. Or I could have gotten one of the gang to come along. One of the four boys Derry and Soda and I have grown up with and consider family. We're almost as close as brothers. When you grow up in a tight-knit neighborhood like ours, you get to know each other real well. If I thought about it, I could have called Derry. He would have come by on his way home and picked me up. Or Two-Bit Matthews, one of our gang. He would have come to get me in his car if I asked him. But sometimes... I just don't use my head. It drives my brother Derry nuts when I do stuff like that, because I'm supposed to be smart. I make good grades, I have a high IQ and everything, but I don't use my head. Besides, I like walking. I'd about decided I didn't like it so much, though, when I spotted that red Corvair trailing me. I was almost two blocks from home then, so I started walking a little faster. I'd never been jumped, but I'd seen Johnny after four socias got hold of him, and it wasn't pretty. Johnny was scared of his own shadow after that. Johnny was 16 then. I knew it wasn't any use, though. Fast walking, I mean. Even before that Corvair pulled up beside me and five socias got out. The Corvair he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Looks like that. It was a really nice convertible. Sort of a rich kid's car. Yeah, so that's the Corvair that pulls up as he's walking home. But there was fathers who got out? And five socias got out. I got pretty scared. All right. I'm kind of small for 14, even though I have a good build, and those guys were bigger than me. I automatically hitched my thumbs in my jeans and slouched, wondering if I could get away if I made a break for it. And I remember Johnny, his face all cut up and bruised, and I remembered how he had cried when we found him, half-conscious in the corner lot. I mean, Johnny had it awful rough at home. It took a lot to make him cry. Anyway, I was sweating something fierce, although I was cold. I can feel my palms getting clammy and the perspiration running down my back. I get like that when I'm real scared. I glanced around for a pop bottle or a stick or something. Steve Randall, Soda's best buddy, had once held off four guys with a busted pop bottle. But there was nothing, so I stood there like a bump on a log while they surrounded me. I don't use my head. They walked around slowly, silently, smiling. Uh, quick pause. When you talk about the busted pop bottle, they don't mean like the plastic ones you get in the <coughs> machines today. They mean like the old glass ones. Uh, so when you get like smash them on the ground, and then you have like sharp pointy edges. We're so then when the social comes at you, you can go like stabby, stabby, bleedy, bleedy, killy, killy. So that's what they're talking about. The plastic ones aren't going to do any good. If they come to attack you, like donk, 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 you just hit them in the head, then they just beat I you up. Like a... no, you, can no. him, you can hit them in the calf and that hurts a lot. That could be, but I don't think that's going to stop a person from beating you up. 
as opposed to a glass one when you break it and it's got sharp edges, that might be more scary than a plastic cap. But it just depends on how you go. Hey, Grease, one said in an over-friendly voice. We're going to do you a favor, Greaser. We're going to cut all that long, greasy hair off. He had on a madras shirt. I can still see it. Blue madras. One of them laughed and then cussed me out in a low voice. This is what madras is. It's that sort of pattern. It was real popular for a little bit. So that's what the madras is they're wearing. It came back because uh, Hollister made it real popular like four or five years ago and kids were wearing it again. And they're like, oh, Joey, where's that? And they point to it again. But now it's sort of back out. One of them laughed and cussed me out in a low voice. I couldn't think of anything to say. There just isn't a whole lot you can say while waiting to get mugged, so I kept my mouth shut. You need a haircut, greaser? The medium-sized blonde pulled a knife out of his back pocket, flipped the blade open. I finally thought of something to say. No! I was backing up, away from that knife. And of course, I backed right into one of them. They had me down in a second. They had my arms and legs pinned down, and one of them was sitting on my chest with his knees on my elbows, and if you don't think that hurts, you're crazy. I could smell English leather shaving lotion and stale tobacco, and I wondered foolishly if I'd suffocate before they did anything. I was scared so bad I was wishing I would. I fought to get loose, and almost did for a second. And then they tightened up on me, and the one on my chest slugged me a couple times, so I lay still, swearing at them between gasps, a blade was held against my throat. How'd you like that haircut to begin just below the chin? It occurred to me that they could kill me. I went wild. I started screaming for soda, dairy, anyone. Someone put his hand over my mouth and I bit it as hard as I could, tasting the blood running through my teeth. I heard a muttered curse and got slugged again, and then they were stuffing a handkerchief in my mouth. One of them kept saying, shut him up for Pete's sake, shut him up. And then there were shouts and the pounding of feet, and the Sosas jumped up and left me lying there, gasping. I lay there and wondered what in the world was happening. People were jumping over me and running by me, and I was too dazed to figure it out. And then someone had me under the armpits and was hauling me to my feet. And it was Derry. Are you all right, pony boy? He was shaking me. I wished he'd stop. I was dizzy enough anyway, but I could tell it was Derry, though, partly because of the voice and partly because Derry's always rough with me without meaning to be. I'm going to pause there for a second. Two things I need to hit. Um, they're going to talk about this empty lot quite a bit. It's where they all sort of hang out. An empty lot is just a spot in a neighborhood where they could have built a house and then didn't. So it's like something like this where you have like houses all around, and it's just an empty spot in the neighborhood. Um, around here, I know in Woodbury where I used to live, there's definitely a bunch of empty lots where it just sort of becomes like a grassy area. Um, and Anderson Hall where they're still building, uh, an empty lot would be like this. I used to Google Maps. It's my house. That's Reese's house. It's my house. And so that would be an empty lot. It's my like, house. There's a house that's going to be there, but they there, haven't there, built there, a house there. There is a house. Oh, is that kid losing points yelling at And so that's where an empty lot is just an empty spot in the neighborhood. So this is where they keep talking about the fact they go to this empty lot and they go and hang out and stuff like that. It's just an empty spot there. And I also have show and tell, so hang on one moment. Let me get out show and tell. When the one left the right. The Sosas show up. We still have empty lots. I like the one. No, the one, the one, the one on the right is mine. There's like a house right next to it. I figured when I was googling and trying to find an empty lot, it ended up being like near someone's house, but Anderson Hall is the easiest place to find. Yeah, but there's no house there. They built it already. Yeah. I figure it's like an old one. Um, when the Sochas show up and are getting ready to stomp on poor Pony Boy, he mentions being able to smell two things. The two things being tobacco and tobacco and mail lotion, English leather. And so English leather is like a cologne type thing. So I went bought English leather. I did not bring in the tobacco. Uh, you just have to wait until after school when you smoke yours and then smell it from there. Uh, but I did bring in the English leather so you get a chance to smell that. I'm going to pop it on a little uh, thing a here. Light. And then come around and give you a sniff. That looks like Imagine that looks this is. How old is that? That looks like a crack from once ago. Why do you want to drink some? The color reminds me of whiskey. Yeah, it does. Wait, see, like how do you know? Yeah, it does. Me too. Oh, me too. Me too. Me too. Get home. Ooh, English leather. And so this is what he smells. Um, if you're at home, if you lean really close to your screen, we'll see if you can smell it. Oh, it's good stuff. 
Uh, if you want to give it, this is what he can smell when he's being held down. That and the cigarette tobacco stuff. Everyone's away. Exactly. I know what cigarettes are. Yeah, you too. Uh, anyway. I've been Watch told to smell like uh, I've been told to smell like that. 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 Uh, Alfalfa from Little Rascals. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. That's like the most classic cow lick. It has like a little drink that sticks up in the back. Rascals. Cow lick in the back, just like Dad's. But Dairy's eyes are his own. He's got eyes that are like two pieces of pale blue-green ice. <laughs> They've got a determined set to them, like the rest of them. He looks older than 20. Tough, cool, smart. He'd be real handsome if his eyes weren't so cold. I mean, he doesn't understand anything that's not plain, hard fact. But he uses his head. I sat down again, rubbing my cheek where I'd been slugged the most. Derry jammed his fists in his pockets. They didn't hurt you too bad, did they? They did. I was smarting and aching, and my chest was sore. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. I wanted to start bawling, but you just don't say that to Derry. I'm okay. Soda Pop came loping back. By then, I'd figured that all the noise I'd heard was the gang coming to rescue me. He dropped down beside me, examining my head. You got cut up a little, huh, Tony boy? I looked at him blankly. I did? He pulled out a handkerchief, wet the end of it with his tongue, and then pressed it gently against the side of my head. You're bleeding like a stuck pig. I, I am? Look. He showed me the handkerchief, reddened as if by magic. Did they pull a blade on you? I remembered that voice. You need a haircut, greaser? The blade must have slipped while he was trying to shut me up. Yeah. Now, Soda,
The sun bleaches it to a shining wheat gold. His eyes are dark brown, lively, dancing, recklessly laughing eyes that can be gentle and sympathetic one moment and blazing with anger the next. I mean, he has dad's eyes, but so does one of a kind. He'd get drunk in a drag race or dancing without ever even getting near alcohol. In our neighborhood, it's rare to find a kid who doesn't drink once in a while, but soda never touches a drop. He doesn't need to. He gets drunk on just plain living, and he understands everybody. Uh, real quick with that comment, do you know what it means when he says he gets drunk without touching alcohol? He like just... It's hot. He's crazy. No. He's a crazy man. Yeah, more that he's just that kid. Normally people have to drink so they can feel loose and dance and have fun and like unleash. And Soda Pop is just always like that. He's the kid that's just always smiling, always happy. You're just like, oh, I wonder who's going to go over there and go talk to that girl. So I was like, I'll do it. And he just goes over and starts talking to him. Like, whoa, look. He's just always outgoing, friendly, doesn't care. Nothing holds him back. He's like, I don't need alcohol. He's like, I just enjoy life all the time. That's Soda Pop. Wait, I thought like... Mm -hmm. Like the little swirly on your head, mm -hmm. is that a calic? Yeah, that's can what, be. Yeah, I've seen people, they have like a little like tornado thing. Yep, that can be a type of calic also. Usually when it's when your hair that you just can't control, you're like, I put mousse on it, and gel, and then it was right best just to be like calic. Yay. He looked at me more closely. I looked away hurriedly, because if you want to know the truth, I'm starting to bawl. I knew I was as white as I felt, and I was shaking like a leaf. Ball, B-A-W-L is? Crying. Yeah, not like... Balling, uh, but you know, ball as in tears. Soda just put his hand on my shoulder. Easy, pony boy. They ain't gonna hurt you no more. I know, I said. But the ground began to blur, and I felt hot tears running down my cheeks. I brushed them away impatiently. I'm just a little spooked. That's all. I drew a quivering breath and quit crying. You just don't cry in front of Derry. I mean, not unless you're hurt like Johnny had been that day we found him in the vacant lot. Compared to Johnny, I wasn't hurt at all. Soda rubbed my hair. You're an okay kid, pony. I had to grin at him. Soda can make you grin no matter what. I guess it's because he's always grinning so much himself. You're crazy, Soda. Out of your mind. Derry looked as if he'd like to knock our heads together. You're both nuts. Soda merely cocked an eyebrow, a trick he picked up from Two-Bit. Seems to run in the family. Cocking an eyebrow. This where you have the one eyebrow that goes up on one side. Uh, when back when uh, Dwayne Johnson was the rock and he could smell what the people were cooking. Um, and then he's like, work would pop up. And so the same thing with um, Buzz Lightyear when he went into Spanish mode in the second one. And he does the same thing. He's like, ooh, hola, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. That's the third one. Was it the third one? How embarrassing on my part. And so the third one. So it's the same thing with the eyebrow pops up. Tomorrow we'll pick up and read more. We're going to stop there because it's time to see which kids we get to torture. Yay! Those of you at home, you don't get to enjoy this next part. I'm going to show you... Uh -huh. I will explain this next part. There. So what's going to happen is I'm going to be giving you your name, which hopefully you've already written on there, because if you lose this, it does cost B points to get new information. Your study group is going to be a letter between A and Y. And then your cabinet will be number between 1 and 6, bus between 1 and 8, table number between 1 and 32. Hopper is every meal someone has to set the table. It's going to rotate, but I had to pick somebody to set the very first meal. So I tried to pick responsible kids. If you get picked as a hopper, congratulations. I chose you as a responsible kid. It either means the kids at your table are horrifyingly less responsible than you, or you're just more responsible than all the rest of them. When you're trying to figure out kids in your group today, when you're talking to other people, realize globe trotters and half the stars are going the other half of the week. So if you're in group A and your globe trotter friend is in group A, you're not in the same group because you're there at different times. So keep that part in mind. Because I have kids like, the globe trotters in my group. I know that's it's not possible. You're just dumb. So keep that part in the idea there. Your bus, if someone is in your cabin, they're going to be in your bus. Because a bus is three cabins put together. And then the table is just going to be random. Most likely you're not going to have a friend at your table. You should have a friend in your study group. You should have a friend in your cabin. And then you'll definitely have a friend on the bus, and then table's going to be random. All right. So now we get to stop there.